Welcome to the Laurel and Oak Designs DIY kit tutorial. Let's get started. Each DIY kit is going to look a little bit different, but every one you will receive the stencils and the base wood for the kit that you selected. One item that's not included is the squeegee. You can replace this with a credit card or a gift card instead. A larger cup of paint for the base coat of your signs, sponge paint brushes for stenciling, a detailed brush to fix any blemishes, toothpicks to weed out any intricate portions of your design. I use a squeegee to flatten down the design throughout the process and then also a cup of water to clean out any paint brushes as needed. Your signs come pre-sanded so you can begin painting the base coat right away. Work your way through in thin even coats. Usually two coats of paint works just fine but if you want a more covered look you can apply as many coats as needed until you receive the desired effect. Once you're happy and finished with the base coat of your design, it's time to apply your stencil. You do so by laying the stencil portion down and then using your fingers to apply pressure with the stencil backing as you gently roll it backwards. If parts of the stencil um, try to come up, it helps to use a toothpick to help hold those pieces down. 
You then are going to lay the stencil in the area that you'd like on your sign, and then you use your flat object to apply pressure to it to adhere it to the wood on the sign. When you have the stencil secure after applying pressure with your flat object, that's then time to remove the contact paper, which is the clear paper on top of the stencil. The stencil is the blue vinyl. You gently roll the clear contact paper back with your fingers. You can use the toothpick or another sharp object to help hold down the insides of letters or any intricate portions of your design that may be trying to come up with the paper as you roll it backwards. One tip I have for this if you are having any issues with the design coming up with the paper is to roll the contact paper back forward and then just to the spot that's giving you the issue and then use pressure from your fingers to hold it down and then try rolling it backwards again. Um, this is just a little tip, but your toothpick is going to work really well as well at keeping the design down, at least any of the smaller parts that are inside. Now you're going to repeat the same step that we did with this first sign with your next sign. I know some kits come with a few different uh, pieces of wood, so you're going to be doing this with each sign that came in your kit. The next step after removing the contact paper once your stencil is ready isn't a requirement, but it really does help to ensure you have crisp lines around your stencil and that minimizes the bleed. In this next step, we are painting the base coat over the whole portion of the stencil. This helps to seal all of the edges and will really minimize um, any bleed under from the other paints that you'll be painting on top of this. And through this process, remember we're doing very, very thin coats. You want, don't want to do anything too heavy if you apply too much paint during this process when you go to pull the stencil off. It's going to tear some of the letters from underneath, so be sure while you're painting this, it's just really a very light coat of paint to ensure that it uh, seals around the edges of your stencil. Once you're all finished painting your thin layer of the base coat, we're going to allow that to dry, and then once that's dry, you can begin painting the main color of your stencil. And for this, you want to do very thin coats. The thinner, the better. Uh, again, this helps to ensure that the letters don't tear when you pull the stencil off. And it also helps to minimize bleed under from the main paint while you're painting. Normally, I will apply two to three very light coats of paint over the letters of my stencil. And that gives plenty of coverage to make sure your letters are filled in well. Once you've finished with the design color and it's dry to the touch, you can remove the stencil. Um, I don't like to let mine dry for too long, but I also don't want to pull it while it's wet. Um, if you pull while the design's still wet, you can damage the base of your sign, which isn't the end of the world. You can always use your detail paintbrush and go back through and clean up any um, overfill portions of your sign or any blemishes that happen throughout the process. You then will, can take your toothpick to weed out any of the insides of the letters or any more detailed portions of your sign. When you're removing the inside of the letters or really small portions of the designs, I try to pick um, at the smaller, the top or the bottom of the corner of the letter. Usually there's a little bit of a gap there that you can pick your toothpick underneath. Sometimes you have to work at it a little bit harder.
with this specific design if you want to add a little bit more detail to your pumpkin you can do so by taking some of the colors in the other palette and mixing them with the base color I like to add a little bit of browns and greens and you can use your sponge brush to fill in any of the white portions of your pumpkin this helps to add a little dimension and shading to your design and really I don't have any specific technique that I use to do this I just keep shading and blending the colors until I get the look that I like. I also used the detail paintbrush um, around the top portion of the design and then to go around where I maybe went outside of the lines with my paintbrush just to add um, to clean up any lines around the outside of the design. Um, and remember pumpkins aren't perfect so this is something that can be a little bit lumpy or bumpy and it still looks really cute when you're done and it just makes it look more realistic i feel all right and that's it you guys have completed all the steps in your diy kit and you can now enjoy your new sign